When starting a new project on Xcode, you'll have the option to choose between two frameworks, UIKit and SwiftUI. SwiftUI is the new way of building our user interfaces and the default choice. Now, if you choose the SwiftUI option, you can still incorporate UIKit elements inside of your SwiftUI app. Your other option is to choose the storyboard. The storyboard is the primary way for us to visually build our interfaces in UIKit. If you plan on building a UIKit app, that's the option to take. The next option is your lifecycle dropdown. This is how your app responds to events. There are times when your app is notified from external sources, such as the arrival of an email or a text message. Using the UIKit delegate creates an app delegate file that responds to these system messages. Otherwise, you create scene objects to manage all the elements. This option only comes into play if you are creating a SwiftUI app. With a UIKit storyboard-based app, you can only use a UIKit app delegate. To get started, open up Xcode and select the Create a New Xcode Project option. You'll be presented with a whole series of app templates. We want to create an app, so select the App option and then click the Next button. First comes the product name. Call it Story Prompt. Provide your team name and your organization identifier. For this project, I'm using com.raiseware. Now we choose an interface. Xcode provides two options, Swift UI and Storyboard. For this project, we're using UIKit, so set it to Storyboard. By selecting the Storyboard option, the UIKit app delegate is automatically selected. Finally, make sure the language is set to Swift. Click Next and save your project on your desktop. Now you'll see a whole bunch of files for your project. We'll review all of them soon, but when it comes to creating UIKit apps, the view controller is the most important. View controllers are the lifeblood of UIKit apps. These objects represent the screens on an iOS app. iOS is set up to use what is known as MVC structure, that is model view controller. The model is the data. If you were displaying a list, the model would be an array of strings. The view is the visible representation of the model. These would be labels. The view controller sits between the model and the view. When a user interacts with the view, the view controller is notified. Then the view controller can update the model or be no notified when the model changes so it can update the view. View controllers have lots of different lifecycle methods. The first is view did load, and this is called when a view is created. And this is a good place to initialize objects such as your model. You can use it to set up your text fields and other user interface controls. View will appear is called right before a view appears. This is called every time a view appears. View did appear is called after a view appears, and this is a good time to fire off animations. On the opposite side, we have view will disappear right before view is removed from the screen. View did disappear is called after a view is removed from the screen. In times when your app runs into memory issues, you can respond to did receive memory warning to deallocate objects from memory. With the project open, take a look at the project navigator. You'll see that your project already contains a whole bunch of files. The first file is the app delegate. This allows you to respond to external events, such as if the app is brought into the foreground or background. The scene delegate is called when a screen or window is displayed. Next, you'll have the view controller file. We'll return back to this in a moment. Now let's take a look at main.storyboard. This is where we lay out the user interfaces. We add our controls and we manage the overall flow of the app structure. Then we have our assets catalog. The assets catalog is where we put all of our images. We can reference these images in our storyboard or in our code. Next is our launch screen. This is the first screen that is displayed when the app launches. 
Finally, there is the info.plist file, and this is where we can configure our app. Okay, so now we need to add our model objects. Create a new group and call it model. From the starter files, drag in the model starter files into the model group. The story prompts file contains a class that generates story prompts. First, it has a genre. Story prompts can either be science fiction or horror. Next, it contains a list of pre-created prompts that work just like Mad Libs. Users will provide a noun, adjective, verb, and a number, which is then added to the prompts, making sometimes a funny story. Finally, the static prompt for method produces a new story prompt. The story prompt entry model object encapsulates a single story prompt. It contains the properties of the noun, adjective, verb, genre, and number. It also contains an image property so that it can store a thumbnail. The object stores all the parts of speech and then updates the string that is the story prompt when it's printed out. Now let's create a new story prompt object and print it out. A good place to do this is in our view controller. Open viewcontroller.swift and add the following to view did load. This just assigns some strings to our parts of speech properties, and then we print it out. Build and run the app. And look down in the console, and you'll see your story prompt. Well done.